Hi, so I want to talk about uh, something we talked about in the last video, which is finding a hardest problem in NP. We want to do such a thing because if we want to be able to separate P and NP, which again, we still don't know if this is true as of this video, um, then a hardest problem would be one, certainly one that is in NP, but not in P. So assuming the world looks like this, where P, the problems in P are right here, and NP is right here, then the hardest problem would be some uh, element right here. It's in something in NP, but also not in P. If I picked any other one that it may or may not be in P, we don't know for sure, but I find the hardest one, then it certainly makes sense that it would be an NP, but not in P. So what is a way of figuring out or a definition for what such a hardest problem might look like? So we're going to look at one possible way of approaching this, which is called poly time reducibility. So in the, let me finish writing, writing this, reducibility. So we talked about reducibility in the intro theory series, which is we have two problems and we say that one reduces to the other one if there is a computable function taking inputs of one to the other where the answers were the same. And the fact that the answers were the same allowed us to infer whether one problem is decidable or undecidable or whatever a bit that uh, corresponded to the other one. Now we're going to actually have a restriction on the type of reductions here, which is that they run in polynomial time. And the way that we write this is a, a less than or equal to p uh, b. So problem a poly reduces to b. Um, and so the p here was m before when we talked about mapping reducibility. Here is poly time reducibility. And what this is saying is that uh, if and only if there's uh, some function going from f, which is taking strings, not from a, from sigma star uh, going to, let's say, gamma star, where a is a uh, language over sigma star and b is a subset of gamma star, such that we have two different things. We have that f, sorry, we have that a string w is in a if and only if uh, f of w is in b. Okay, so this is the exact same notion as reductions before. The answer of whether the original thing is in A is the same thing as uh, if we compute the thing uh, for B, then it's in B the same uh, time whenever W is in A. And what we have is that F runs in poly time. So this isn't exactly right because F is a function, but we mean that uh, we can compute it using a polynomial time Turing machine, deterministic Turing machine, uh, in polynomial time. Okay, and that is a notion of reducibility. Then a notion of what hardness means is that uh, we talk about these polytime reductions among NP problems. So we're going to say that uh, language A is NP hard if for all b in np, np, we have that a, uh, sorry, wrong order. The order really matters here. So b reduces to a. So that means every single uh, problem in np, uh, poly reduces to a, every single one. Um, then we call that problem a np hard, okay? Um, but we're gonna make one additional qualification. A is NP complete. If uh, A is NP hard, so that means everything in NP reduces to A, and A is also in NP. So you may think, okay, well, this is kind of silly. Well, NP hard kind of sounds like you're in NP already. It turns out that that's not necessarily true. In fact, ATM, the undecidable problem, is NP hard, but it's not NP complete because it's not in any finite time language class, and certainly NP is not in 
there. So we want to talk about NP complete because those are the problems in NP, but are the hardest ones. Because one thing that we can find out is, well, if any NP complete problem is in P, then P equals NP. So if any, uh, let's say A is NP complete, and A is in P, then P equals NP. So uh, I'm not gonna formally prove this, but why is this true? So NP complete means obviously everything in NP poly reduces to uh, A. So then what we can do is, okay, well A can be run in polynomial time. So take the whatever input for B you got, do the poly time reduction to A, so then the resulting uh, instance for A is only polynomially larger because the whole reduction takes polynomial time and then compute the thing on A um, or with some poly time uh, algorithm for A and then the answer corresponds to that of B. Well, let's actually figure that out. So let's say that uh, A is in time uh, n to the k and the compute the function itself is in time uh, n to the l let's say then doing the reduction will let's see so if we have an instance of size n then the reduction f will uh, get us an instance of size at most um, uh, n to the l uh, so, so i put a big o here because it could be less but then running the algorithm for A will take an input of this size um, to the kth power. And so then the running time for A would be at most n to the uh, L to the power k, which is L times k upstairs. And notice that this is still a polynomial because it's just a number times another number. So here is the algorithm for A. And so therefore, um, we have shown that the, the so this is a the running time for the algorithm for B, and so B runs in polynomial time. And since every problem in NP reduced to A, then that means that every single algorithm will uh, take this a uh, polynomial amount of time for every problem in NP. And so therefore, we have concluded that if A is NP complete and uh, is also in P, then these are the are the same. P and NP are the same. So that would imply that A is some, in some sense the hardest problem in NP because if it were in P, then P and NP would be the same. And so I, I shouldn't mention one thing, which is that polytime reducibility is the one that's usually uh, used, but sometimes we want to have a more strict notion of reducibility. So sometimes we restrict here to say not any polynomial, but maybe linear time reduction or maybe logarithmic space reduction or something that's more constrained than polynomial time. But here we're gonna use polynomial time because that's what everyone used for a very, very long time and it's what everyone uh, is used to. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about P versus NP in the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.